I thank God for everyone. It's time to get down to business. And I want Gainesville to talk to me because I'm your guest. What's, excuse me, what's your name? Say it again. Chandria. All right, I want to say something to you. You don't mind, do you? You were singing in the choir. This is what the Lord spoke to me. It's going to sound far-fetched, but if 30 of your members and 20 of mine praise God for you, you will remember me for the rest of your life. You're about to get close to a $2.5 million grant, right? And God says, and the Holy Ghost says he's going to franchise, but you're going to have to do something and legitimately, I don't know what God is saying, you need to legitimately pay more money to trademark a name. Because the name is taken six times. No one owns it, but you can legitimately own it. I'm telling, I don't know what I'm talking about. If you do what I tell you, but God says about $2.5 million, you're going to need a team with two white women who know how to get it. Then you're going to get a piece of property that's about three acres, 2.5 acres. And this is for all girls. It's all girls. It's all girls. Now, y'all, I've been doing this for a long time. So you may not see me quicken and blow, but just listen. You may not see me do all the extra stuff, the fire of God. You may not see none of that. That's for folk who's just getting excited. I understand. But the thing is, what's your name again? But the thing is, we have to manage our miracles. Yes, sir. So once God provides it, you need the team that can maintain it. Or it'll go in the reverse. I need to ask a question. Why are you stopping at age five? But you have stopped at age five. Okay. Because we're going to get that age up to eight. And you're going to need to do it for a new beginning. You're going to get that age from two to eight. Where you at now? But what's the age is? Oh, two to five. Okay, so we're going to go from two to eight. We're going to get you all this money from glory. We're going to get you real blessed. Yes, sir. Now, now, this would have never happened if God would have truly allowed you to be married. God says, tell her I had to take her through a rough time and a storm, but tell her after this year, I'll make it all up to her. And someone with a loud mouth better start clapping and praying. You may be seated. Oh, that's why you got a trademark it. It's H E R. And because there's a female R&B group called her. That's it. There's another, I won't give that away called her, but none of them are trademark. What you need to do is do your business. Yes, sir. Then if they want to continue to use the name, they pay you. All right, everybody's too quiet in this church. I
To the woman that just sat down in the red, stand up, please. What is your first name? Regina. How are you? You ha oh, I like that. Oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm blessing Holly Faith. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them I'm blessed and highly favored. I was driving, I drove, even though I have a driver, but if I'm awake, I put my life in my own hands. So I drove. <laughs> because when I'm driving him, he be talking and fall asleep while he's talking, so I can't trust that right now. <laughs> but I was driving here, I can't remember the streets, University. Y'all help me. You thank you, help me, babe. University Avenue. What's, what's, what's your name? Cause you were so kind. Okay, driving down University, and when I was driving and I passed, I don't know why, I passed the orange truck outside, and it said, uh, Wims Salon, W-I-M-S. It's out there, right on University. Do you know them? How? That's what? Oh, that's your husband's business. I won't talk about that because you don't need me to because you're a prophetess and you and God can talk about that. Because certain things are not to be publicly discussed. But I will give you good news. Somebody is going to probably go to med school named Chance. Seventeen, eighteen. How old is he? Just turned seventeen, August first. Where is he? Okay, good. He had basketball. So, have y'all ever talked about what he wants to do? What did he say? Physical therapy. Dealing into the sports medicine kind field. All right. So, what about Gabriel? That's his middle name. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Pastor, is this worth your five years yet? I'm trying to make up for it. <laughs> trying to do as much work as I can. God is truly going to reward your family. The first thing I mentioned was just to let you know that sometimes you have to change your focus and shift it from one area to the yes, other. Lord. But God said, when I'm finished with chance, yes, you'll never have to worry about chance whether you'll be the happiest woman on the face of the earth. Regina. <laughs> Regina. You're a preacher. Oh, you're an elder in this church? Y'all don't know what kind of prophetess y'all have. <laughs> Pastor said, I know, but the rest of you don't know. But God says, tell you by 2024, he's going to give you wings and you're going to soar like you've never soared before. And someone with a loud mouth ought to shout hallelujah. <laughs> All right, you may be seated. We do have, we are, we do, we are on social media because I tagged it. We still on? Who is Beverly? Is there Beverly in here? I want to look, stand, no, no, I'm looking, no. I'm, I'm talking to the camera. I said, Facebook, are we live? How do y'all see it? Okay, if y'all are in there because I can't see you, y'all scroll down and look for Beverly. Beverly should start writing you soon, so folk will know this ain't no game. Yes, Lord. Beverly, yes, Lord. Her, she has another name. I don't know if it's her last name. Sounds like a boy's name. It's Jerome. Oh. 
Hold on, y'all making it sound like you know her. What? Oh, she's a member. Okay, who knows how to reach her? Being that you know her, anybody close enough to her to reach her? Who? The administrator, go ahead and tell me what to do. Tell somebody in the administrative <laughs> office or you can reach her. What's your name again? I can't remember. I want you to tell her, I don't know how to say this, because she's married also. I want you to tell her that she needs to, I don't know how to say it, she needs to be a little more kind to him if she's going to start practicing for some sports fitness show. She's about to do a 2020. Yes, sir. She's watching. All right, I'm good. So 2024, Miss uh, Beverly, or whatever the name is now. You're going to be doing some kind of bodybuilding show. Number two, you're going to own a fitness center, and you're not going to have to keep paying at Crunch Fitness. Number three, there's a miracle coming to you all the way from uh, like a hometown, Chicago, Illinois. Now, if Beverly starts praising God where she is and we'll praise God for her where we are, this will happen very quickly. Someone shout glory to God. There was a man at one time, he was standing against that wall. He's gone, I don't remember how he looked, salt and pepper hair. He was standing right on that wall with like a grayish suit. Is he gone? Y'all, all you men should know each other. He was working for you. No. No. Weren't you over there? You don't hear me talking? What's your last name? Frazier? Man, if you didn't talk to me and I didn't find you, you would have been missing out and you're going to have to run now for this. You'd have been missing out on millions of dollars from a real estate deal that's about to go all the way to the top of the world. You're about to travel the East Coast, the West Coast, and God said, tell Wanda, I said hi. Y'all ain't talking. See, your wife got some sense. Your wife got some good sense, brother. You tell me I'm going to make millions, I'll run with a bad leg. You think I'm lying? I only did it because what I'm doing right now to men like you and I, you'd be like, I don't really believe in all that till I get you. What did it feel like? Felt like God's been watching, right? Like he's been watching for the man around the wall who's married to Centuria. Who's Centoria? Oh, you ain't even stand up on that, huh? You just stayed down. December the 3rd? I'm going to ask you to run slowly down the aisle and back because you will do it. When you do it, God says, 
Don't put no amount. Tell him I got to give him a lot of money because she's expensive. God said you spoiled her. What's your last name? Mac Macmillan? And, and then about time y'all make all this money, the Macmillans and the Frasers can go on vacation together. They're only going because of Wanda and Centoria, you know that? Now, with all of the prophetic that is going on, Wait a minute, who's Bivens? Didn't I see you? I picked her out. I yes. said, the way she was walking, I said, you holy. Yes, you did. I told her. Sure did. She was trying to sneak a fruit basket in my room. <laughs> and she didn't know it was me. She was telling the man, can you put a fruit basket? I'm not sure how to say this. All right, I do. You have a big family. How big is the Bivens family? So are you Bivens by marriage? So where's the Bivens that I should be talking to? You all right, my brother? Or you hiding? <laughs> Who is Bramel? Oh, your son. Is he your son? Cause he ain't said nothing yet. It's okay, I'm kidding, y'all taking it serious because black people will turn the thing around, I tell you. Does anyone in your family have a barber shop? Ramel. He's gonna be extremely rich. And God says, I'm about to give him the baptism of the Holy Ghost like never before. Y'all jealous of each other. So then who's Tyrell? But they're not twins, are they? Three years, nine days apart. The Holy Ghost said, tell you, you will never have to pray for any of your children after today. After today, they will be in the hands of the Almighty God. And someone that knows what a Shabbat praise sounds like, let's give it to God. seated and to the answer for a few people no my gift does not work like this all the time there's times I lose my keys and I be asking the Lord you speak to me about everybody else can you just help me find my keys I was looking for my retainers last night And I asked the Lord, I'm not lying, you laughing. Lord, can you cut my gift on one time? Need these retainers. 
I looked everywhere, places where retainers shouldn't be. <laughs> then the Holy Ghost said to me, Young Bleed did it one time, he said, they in the refrigerator. <laughs> and I went in the fridge, I said, now nah, I don't know how these got here. God can't trust some of us with this kind of gift if we can use it on our own because if we could, we'd hit the lottery tonight. Don't act like, I ain't going to tell on nobody, but, but a few of y'all played today, including two preachers. I ain't going to bother you. Don't look around, just look straight. And I get it. You promise God you're going to pay tithe. And I get it. You're going to bless your pastor. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, for ten folk, then I want to read scripture. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Most people that have this type of gift, they try to pimp the church for all of their money and lie to people and do side psychic jobs. But when the Lord healed me of my stroke, I made a vow to the Lord. If some of you make a vow to the Lord, he'll give you something you never had before. But he has to know you won't break your vow. Lord, I hit, I will pay tithe. You don't pay tithe off your paycheck. How can he trust you with the greater thing when you won't do right by the lesser thing? Young lady in the one, two, three, fourth row, long hair, light skin, singing the choir, stand up, baby. Scream your name out. Your entire name. How old are you? I want to tell you something. When you was up there and when I was just being used of the Holy Spirit to minister to the people of God, you were looking like, this is crazy, this is wild, but your face never changed. And you was like, well, Lord, I don't need much. But let me tell you what you should run for, but don't run. You got heels on? Good, don't do that. <laughs> let me tell you what you should run for. You should run slowly, because God says, tell her, I've changed what people said, and that is tell her, I will make sure she gets a yes for any school she wants to go to. I knew it. I knew it. Don't hold her down, baby. Don't hold her down. That's right. Don't hold the Holy Ghost. We need young people that would get excited about their future. I want you to say these two words to your neighbor, be seated, and if they don't get excited, don't talk to them anymore. <laughs> Hold on, one more, then I'll read and we're getting out of here shortly. Britain, B-R-I-T-T-O-N. Oh, you right behind that rope? How are you? I, man, listen, I like manners. Everything that's going to make you rich starts with the letter C. You probably think I'm crazy, but I'll help you. I won't hold you long. One is clinical work. Two is caregiving work. Everything with a C. Wait a minute. You are not from Brooklyn? You from Brooklyn? 
Hmm. What part of Brooklyn? That's where I'm from, baby. If I told you who I was, it'll shock you. I'm not going to do it, but it will, it will shock you. Look at the church folk. Tell us. Even Mother Margaret sitting there like, go ahead. Who are you? Are you living here? I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but you have to talk to God because you're going to live in three states. Stay here, but you're going to have to choose two more because of your caregiving business. If you do this right and find you some partners and hire you some other people that you can plant places, you will become like a McDonald's franchise. God said, tell her this should have happened six years ago. But you tell her why y'all quiet on this side. And I don't know what he means. He said, tell her none of this that I'm about to do would have been birth if she didn't get hurt. He said, none of it. Hallelujah. Well, you should be able to tell us what the last C is. Can you tell me what the... Go ahead. Oh, that's it. That's the name of your new business? It's called what? Chocolate Girls. That's a business. That's a brand. That brand killing it, ain't it? Listen to me. God's about to give you an agent that's going to show you how to make chocolate girls fly. And somebody with a loud mouth. Get your Bibles. I've got 30 minutes left in me and we out of here. Work, man, work. Work how you feel. Work. Work. I know I told you to say two words to your neighbor. If they don't get excited, don't talk to them for about 10 minutes. Just look at your neighbor, whether they understand you or not, and tell them you're next. You're now, hopefully they understand what you're trying to relate to. I don't want you to think I'm crazy. I think you're a very beautiful woman. You have great grandchildren? Yes. I see a huge family. And when I pointed at you and said you were next, the Lord said, tell her she's not getting out of this earth without being a millionaire. Tell her. Oh, y'all mighty quiet up in here. And God says, I'm doing it through her grandchildren. That's one of hers. Girl, if I was elated too, I'd be rejoicing too. Look somebody and tell them, don't get jealous, just praise God for somebody else. Get your Bibles and I want you to look at a familiar passage. Want you to push me quickly because when I say 35 minutes, I mean it. The book of Acts, chapter 3. 
Normally, I'm extremely long-winded with all that I do. But Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1. I want to say to Pastor Margaret, you may not know this, but there's some more papers being found for you. Something did not come through. I won't say that there's a crook somewhere. But there's a crook somewhere. Talk, sir. Speak, Holy Ghost. Talk, sir. Speak. God said they will get caught and they will pay for what they've done. But God said, tell her, give me a few months and ching, ching, your cash is on the way. And someone with a loud mouth ought to jump up and scream for pastor. There are people that's going to be forced to treat you right. They either bow or God will break their backs. There is no other alternative. I don't know what God means, but God said, tell her I was real sorry after he passed for the first two years of what happened. People just talk behind your back for no reason. Even the city don't know what they're talking about. But God said, tell her, after August, I'm about to lift the cloud. And I'm going to make it rain. And when it rains, it pours. And someone that understands about the rain, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You may be seated. A lot of you are saying that's not the doc, the doctor hall. I know he's normally live, running, dancing. I'm under doctor's care, but he'll show up. But I, I'm trying to obey the doctor. Yes, sir. Acts chapter three. Yes, sir. Talk to me, Gainesville. I've been kind to you. Bring it back. (laughs) Acts chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1. I enjoyed you, my brother. You can help me preach in a minute because you're excited. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. That hour was the ninth hour. There's two people on this side upset. I wish he would prophesy to me. Stop looking for gifts. The word will catch you. Look at somebody and tell them, in the word of God, I got a hiding place. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried when they laid, who they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them. That entered into the temple. Thank you. Whatever your name is, you helping me. I'm going to get this name straight in a minute. Between verses 1 and 2 for three folk who love scripture who will scream, you will find this. No need for prayer if there's not an issue at the door. Look at somebody and tell them something is about to be answered. It's coming through your door. And the problem is, I only need 10 because I'm going to preach quickly, is that the man is at the gate, but he can never go in because back then tradition teaches handicapped people could not go into the temple. They can get as close as they can. They can hear folk praying. But they can't go in. 
So I want to say this prophetically for the ten folk who will jump. Whatever God has for you, it's been at the door, but something won't let it in. But God said before midnight, knock, knock. Who's there? What you've been waiting on for years. What God has for you, it's been there for years. It just had no entrance. Money, marriage, ministry. All of it's been there. It just could not enter. Reason being tradition. The way you think. Can I get a house with bad credit? Yes. Can I get a six-figure job without a college degree? Yes. But when you think like a normal person, why should God answer prayer? Don't pray for what you can get on your own. Pray for something that the devil said you cannot have. Come on, talk. God said, ask and it shall be. I'm almost there. Seek. You shall find. Not. Y'all sit your neighbor down. Tell him he ain't there yet, but he on his way. I promise you. These miracles. These miracles, hear me, are only available to people like this young boy who attends church on a regular basis. So if you go to church all the time and you've not been getting anything, you're about to get everything. But if you've been praying and you don't attend church at all, you'll be waiting for a long time. For two screamers, God pays for church attendance. I know you don't believe it. This boy went to church daily, every day, with watching nothing change every single day so for all of you folk who have been coached by demons you don't have to go to church church is in your heart you a liar see I just rebuke half of the saints because the bible said forget not the assembling of yourself then he said, enter his gates with, I'm, I'm going to leave all of this. Then David said, I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go. God ain't coming to your house to be praised. You go to his house and praise him. I will enter his gates. Oh, I'm about to preach because the boy is left at the gate waiting on prayer to get in when praise is what's keeping him out. Refusal to praise. Folk who pray who don't praise, they stay paralyzed. I'm just not a screamer. Go on a roller coaster. Let somebody hit your car. You that don't cuss might cuss at that time. Let somebody. So it's funny. You don't scream, but you cuss. And then you say, I don't cuss. Look what you made me do. We can't get nothing out of you that ain't already in there. And when I think of the goodness, front rows bother me, of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul. The Bible said death and life is in the power of the tongue. So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Shabak, y'all behave and let Gainesville cut up now. No, I'm going to need y'all too, but let Gainesville come through here. The only reason why this temple, which is called beautiful for, for folk who love the Bible, is called beautiful is they won't let nothing ugly in. And
And then some of you are demonic again who still upset at the first demonic statement of churches in your heart. So let me just hurt you a little deeper. And let me tell 50 folk who will scream on this. It is very important. Let me leave it alone. because they... That you understand church is supposed to be full of mess. Church folk nasty. They're supposed to be. Church ain't for saints. It's for folk trying to become something. Church is a deliverance place. So you're sitting near somebody with a demon, with depression, with all kind of debt, and maybe they don't feel like being nice today. God said, cast all your care upon him, which means you're supposed to bring all the mess with you to church. See, if you stand up, talk up, will you? Because I need help. Because I'm just too confused how some of y'all leave churches because of the way people are. They're messy. You messy. Your supervisor messy. Your mama messy. Your children messy. And if we can put up with you, why can't you put up with somebody else? The only church that's beautiful is a church that won't let ugly in. I need all y'all that's messy. Leave my ministry. Now you don't have a church. You got a gathering. You got a social lodge. A cemetery with no dead bodies. Trash cans with no garbage in it. Married people that always sleep in separate beds. All right, maybe I went too far on the last one. Some of you will never understand your job as being a transformed person who did what this boy did with 15 minutes left for those who will scream. You didn't come to church perfect. And what you should always do is reference how good God's been to you. And you be that same person to someone else. I can't stand them. I can't sing with them no more. They get on my nerve. Let me just say one more truth. I'm sorry because I'm a realist. But 30 of you scream on this and talk to me. There are folk in my family I don't like. No, immediate family, not distant. But that's not going to stop me from knowing they are my family. This boy been paralyzed, couldn't walk on his own since he was born. Before I go any further, I want you to look at a neighbor and repeat after me. If they get excited, then you've got a blessed person. If not, be nice to them anyway. But tell your neighbor by 12 midnight, you're going to be back on your feet. Tell them you're going to be able to handle business. You are going to succeed in everything that you do. Tell them you are not going out like this. You will not. I got a topic for this sermon. I'm almost ready. And the topic of the sermon for 50 Screamers is don't take it lying down. Look at your neighbor. Tell them don't take it lying down. You don't take nobody's negative as your final word spoken over your life. Excuse me. You got cancer. You got six months. The devil is a lie. 
if he can look beyond all my faults all right it looks like we're about to do something here I feel the love of Gainesville now. Be seated for five more minutes. Verse three, he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple. He asked for arms. I need to teach. I know when folk are deliverance people, they stay in the prophetic, but we miss the Bible. And sometimes they don't understand that prophecies fail, but the word of God. All right. All right. So just stay with me now. He was a beggar. Let me change that because I've gone to school, as I said, and I'll teach three or four people that are not intimidated by knowledge. You will scream for knowledge. He was a legalized beggar licensed beggar no no let me break it down for another screamer this was his job he had to go to the government to get a license to be on a certain corner like food trucks like handicapped parking spaces you need a decal y'all not talking again and what I like about this boy is when he went and applied for his license to beg, I'll see if 10 folk jump. He said, I need to be on the corner where prayer is. Some of y'all are working too hard, too far away from God. Y'all quit. And the further you get away from church, to chase money, it becomes hard to keep. They quiet over there. You can have two or three jobs and keep being promoted and buy new things and the struggle is real. Y'all ain't talking to me. But when God knows that he's first. I'm not going to talk to this. Uh, he is alpha. I knew what side to talk to. The beginning. Oh, the first. And the last. There's none. Like him. I'd rather have Jesus. I ain't lying more than silver. I'm staying over here. Some folk would rather have houses and land. Some folk choose silver and gold. These things they treasure. They forgot about their soul. But I decided, it was a decision, babies. I decided to make Jesus, I don't feel it, my choice. Because the road has been rough. Yeah. And the going has been tough. And the hills are hard to climb. Oh, I feel some jealousy. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. But I started out. A long time ago. There is no doubt. In my mind. That I've decided. To make Jesus my choice. Can I say one more thing before I go back to the scripture? And I want to see who's with me. Tell me who can stand be for us when we. 
Yanamashande lebeko shaba. Call on that great name. Jesus. Jesus. Y'all not saying it precious, Jesus. We have the victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Y'all get passionate about this. I told Satan, get thee behind. Because victory today is mine. I'm about to close in about 10 now. Peter, verse 4, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. He gave heed unto them, prophetess Sharon, expecting to receive something of them. I've got three verses left. Let me say this from verse 4 and 5, and the first two or three to jump up when you hear it. God will begin to transform you, and that's this. You got to look like you have it even when you don't. The worse you feel, the better you should look. Death can't kill me because I don't have on those type of clothes. I'm dressing to live. Look at your neighbor. If they like you, fine. If not, just treat them nice and tell them I'm not ready to leave here yet. Tell them life still owes me a lot of stuff. And I want it. Now, Bishop Dillard, after this, you can push me. If he's a professional beggar, if this is his job since he was a little jet, then that means he knows a fraud when he sees one. Therefore, I'm going to see if some men will jump. Why didn't he recognize that Peter and John was broke? If you are a professional baker, am I preaching? No, these young people know when a certain group of people are capping. And some of you are all caps. No italicized nothing. No lowercase anything you got your kids believing you never sinned never fornicated never lied these kids done added up their age and your wedding anniversary they like mama think I'm dumb all caps you can help your kids better with the truth cause then they can say if you did it for my mother yo if you did it for my father None of my members, I'm sorry I'm leaving Gainesville for about three minutes. None of my members should be flipping out over any illness or disease. They should be shouting over it and screaming because they had leaders that had everything they had. And if they believe in what we preach, then you get to go to God and say, I am a member of so-and-so. You gave me a leader named so-and-so and the oil drips from the denizens down and if you did it for my pastor, the only way you don't get it is you've been capping. All caps.
Why didn't he know that they were my shandaye? Thank you, Jesus. Why didn't they know or this professional beggar know that they didn't have what he was asking for? Because this is just off the top for two folk who scream for me. Because they could not see that Peter and John was dressed by faith. And a lot of folk are jealous of your walk with God. Because God makes you look like you already have what you don't. Oh, y'all in quiet. And you be saying, why they don't like me? Because the spirit in them is jealous of the dress code that faith has put on you. We walk. We walk by faith. Not. I don't care what sonograms say. I don't care what ultrasounds say. I don't care what MRIs say. We walk. Talk to me. By faith. Not. By prognosis. My doctor told me what he saw on the film of my MRIs and ultrasounds or EKGs. He showed it to me while I was laying there. I heard it and I watched the palpitations and the fluctuations of my heart that they say is not functioning. And I said to him, now that I saw it and heard it, what's wrong? We don't know. Well, Negro, stop telling me what you see if you can't do. Let me take it to a higher power. Let me have a little talk with Jesus. Y'all talking. Let me tell him all about my trouble. See, what's wrong with you is not in the hands of a doctor, it's in the sight. It's in the view. That's why it's called they practice science. Science does not believe in miracles. Because science thinks it is the miracle. So they send us, don't feel bad about this, to the pharmacy to get prescriptions. And the word pharmacy, pharma, actually means conjuring witchcraft. So when man can't fix it, they conjure. They never give us a cure. They give us what calms the symptom. But it comes with side effects. But when you get a miracle, ain't no side effects. He'll make all kidneys new. He'll make all livers new. He'll take out an old heart and put in a new heart of flesh. You better hear me. Three minutes, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? The Bible then says, and we're about to fly. The Bible says that they answered him instead of capping and lying. They said, silver and gold. Have I none? Look at your neighbor. If that's going to be your neighbor for the next few minutes, tell him, have I none for now? Yeah, Dale. See, see, you can I'll be honest. I don't have the money right now. Right now means I believe it's still on the way. Look at some of you. I don't have my spouse right now. But for the screamers, I told you he knocking at the door every day. Silver and gold have I 
none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name. I thought this was a Jesus church, but in the name. My church, y'all sure better get happy over that name. In the name. Not of Johnson and Johnson. Not of Pfizer nor Moderna. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise. Up and walk, which translates for five people get back up on your feet. Tell three people that and see if they understand. Get back up on your feet. Tell them, stand on your own two feet. Now, I can't get screamers, but if I had a subtopic, it would be this for 10 folk who would scream, I don't want a hand out, I just want a hand up. I'm not asking you to give me money. Just show me how to make some. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you for a fish sandwich. Just teach me how to fish. Because if you give it to me, I'll be hungry again tomorrow. But if you teach me how to fish, I'll never be hungry again. If you're standing, you're talking because I'm on my way home. Rise up. Mother, you sit, get up later, and walk. And the Bible says, Bishop Dilly, come here. Let me show you what the Bible says. The Bible now says, and after this we can fly the kite, y'all, that he did not get up on their words alone. There's some folk that speak to you, but not kind to you. Words mean nothing without a hand. Look how quiet. Everybody quiet because all y'all like that, huh? Praying for you. No, no, you don't have to pray. I need $50. You ain't got to pray for that. Somebody need gas money. You don't pray they make it home. You just... Somebody unemployed, you ask them, what are your qualifications? You don't just say God will give you a job if you hold a supervisor position. You should be then saying, well, what do you do? Church needs a lot of miracles because we have a lot of people who don't care for one another. That's it. It ain't no demon. It's insensitivity. Let me talk to her because my church done made me mad. They said to him, Peter and John, silver and gold have we none such as we have. We give to you. They go through the whole church thing in the name of Jesus. They go through the whole thing. Rise on up. Get up out the chair. Walk. He cannot. But the closing verse says this for three folk. And then when Peter recognized words alone didn't do it, he stretched out his hand. Now you can't get the miracle if you don't stretch back. Because some of y'all want God to reach for you, but he ain't reaching because. See, if I get her up without her reaching back, then I'm basically carrying her. But if she reaches back, she's asking to get up on her own. Oh yeah, some of you ain't gonna scream on this, but three of you better. The next home you get is in your name alone. The car, no co-signer, miracle still happen. Not gonna leave you here. And the Bible says, that when they touched, they also agreed that what came out of Peter's mouth was about to happen in the life 
of this boy. If someone's near you that believes you'll be debt free in 30 days, grab their hands and say, let's shake on that. Right now, Dr. Dylan and I, we're shaking on whatever she wants, right? We're shaking on that. Now, uh, if you don't believe I'm going to get it, loose me and let me go. But if you believe I can get it in 30 days, let's shake on that. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I'll give it to you in the name, y'all better call that name of Jesus, rise. Up and walk. The Bible says that he grabbed him by the hand. I'm staying here. And immediately, how long did it take? Ah, I want y'all to look at somebody and tell them it's going to happen right away. Whoa. Yes, it is. want you to touch nobody that doesn't have the faith you need to get back on your feet but if the person near you believes it shake their hand and tell them it's gonna happen right away he may not come when you want him but oh he's right on Oh, y'all don't want to have that kind of church. I said, he's right on. He's right on time. Get somebody else by the hand. The music will play in a minute. But make sure you're touching somebody that believes God for you. And tell your neighbor, if God can't do it, it just can't be done. But tell them the God I serve, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think. And tell that neighbor, I need it by August the 30th. So every day that I come to the house of God. I'm coming with clapping hands, dancing feet, and a screaming mouth. Because God, yes, Lord, he has a miracle with your name on it. Grab a name and tell him it's all right. If you scream a little bit tonight, because tell him by tomorrow where you had no feelings, God's going to give you strength. And by tomorrow, the devil will be under your feet. But don't wait till the battle is over. Make up in your mind. You're going to shout right now. Come on and shake somebody. And tell your neighbor, why are you screaming like that? With no money. Why are you yelling like that and didn't get approved for a loan? Tell your neighbor, because I'm telling the Lord, even if you don't do it, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. And I'm going to praise the Lord while I'm flat on my back. What is wrong? With being flat on your back. After this, I'll preach like I feel. But when uh, you're flat on your back, you are already postured to look under God. The devil made a mistake. You took me to my lowest, but I'm still looking to the highest. 
I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Why don't y'all help me preach and grab a name and say, all of my help, all of my help, all of my help, it cometh from the Lord. Y'all find the right person, Barbara. Y'all ain't found one yet. And say, you don't look excited about what God is about to do for me. But tell them I'm excited about what God's about to do for you. You probably don't know what God's about to do for you. Number one, he's about to deliver your family. That's a reason to scream to a mighty God. Number two, he's about to heal you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. That's a reason to give God glory. Number three, he's about to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory if you believe it tonight tell your neighbor by midnight you'll be on your feet but let this be the last night you praise him flat on your back and let the devil know you should have killed me why you had me but something on the inside is telling me get up from here you tell two and three people get up from here you've been down long enough you've cried long enough took six and seven medications long enough Time for you to grab a neighbor and tell him help ain't on the way. Help is already here. So don't hold back. Just give God glory. When the boy got up off the ground, the Bible said he went walking. He went leaping and started praising God. So praise was not the walking. Praise was not the leaping. Praise is when you lose control and forgot what you were doing. And somebody tonight got to lose control and let the devil know everything in me believes what God said. I might start off running. I might end up crying because all of my emotions are colliding tonight except i'm not crying because i'm sad these are tears tears of joy now grab a neighbor and let's go to church now and tell another neighbor i don't know what you're thinking about tonight but tell them i've got a feeling that everything it's gonna be all right yes yes lord grab somebody else and say neighbor i've got one scripture that i want to quote to you that if you believe it you'll be on your feet by tomorrow morning the scripture is weeping man Weeping man endure for a night, but joy, I can't hear nobody. Joy is coming in the morning. Leap one time and say, I'm balanced, I'm back on my feet. I can get what God says is mine, it's all ready. My Shake another neighbor, cause I feel like touching that. And tell your neighbor, it's all up 
already yours. It may not be in your bank account. It may not be in your bedroom. But by faith, it's already yours. So give God advance praise. Give him a praise that lets him know. Father, 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 I stretch my hands to thee. No other, I can't hear nobody. No other. somebody that looks happy and say neighbor there's something different about you but tell me last time I looked at you you look depressed tell that neighbor not tonight last time I looked at you I heard you were suicidal tell him uh uh not tonight last time I looked at you you look like you were panicking but tonight you look like you've been revived what changed what change? What change was I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I Neighbor's hand and say, Oh, neighbor. I'm sorry, that's from our church, gal, Gainesville. But we'll leave it here with you if you join in. Grab a neighbor who you want to get a miracle and say, Oh, neighbor. If you believe that God is going to fix it by the end of this month, I want you to confess with all the power you have. Look at another neighbor and say it with them. And tell them, I came to Jesus. Come on, let's have sanctified church. I came to Jesus. Just as I was. I was weary. I was warm, I was broke, busted and disgusted, but I found in him, I found in him, I found in him a resting place, and he had, yeah, he had. a church full of believers sound like I got some believers in the room Do me, before before I close I don't care what your dilemma or situation is. It's real. What you feel is not just an emotion. 
It's something that has come up because of something that you found out. But God said, if I can find 50 out of hundreds in here that would dance for 60 seconds. God said, I'll help the others whether they praise or not. When you dance, dance with one thing in mind. It's going to be in my name and nobody else's. You got 60 seconds. One, two, one, two, three, go! Some of y'all are selfish. I told you he couldn't get up without help. So if someone is dancing and you can dance with them, if two people dance, it gets done quicker. If you don't know how to dance, you just leap for joy. If you can't leap, you clap while they dance. But don't stare. Show that you care. You got 30 more seconds. One, two, one, two, three.
When the music stops, do you still have a voice? When there's no music, is there still a mouth? I have one thing left to say as you're holding the hand of someone that believes in your miracle. If you touch them and it's flimsy, let them go. Because that's that church stuff. I need to hold the hand of a believer. Stop with the false care. The miracle begins with who touches you. That's where it begins. I have one or two things I want to say and then we can close and participate in a prophetic moment. But look at me. Don't bow your heads. Don't get churchy because you hold hands. You bow heads. That's church. Stay connected to the prophetic. Hear me closely. All three of these men had the same problem, but they didn't carry it the same way. Let me tell you how, and I'll know who catches it by your yell, and that is... All three were broke. But only two were broke and on their feet. The difference is not my money, it's my posture. I carry my situation better than you carry yours. That's the only difference. Posture. You're not going to break my posture. We don't care how worse it gets by day. I'm going to believe God like I did from day one. Talk to your boy. And some folk preach it, but they don't believe it. I believe every sermon I preach. When he gave it to me, I was first partaker. Second, Dr. Dillard. Second, Brother Frazier. Second, Brother McMillan. Second, Sister Lane. Is this. Y'all ain't got no humor. I don't care. The second thing is this. The boy decided that he would take no money if he can just get up. Which meant the miracle could not be bought. Now, when I say this, you don't scream, you miss it. God says, I'm going to give you something out of your financial range, but not out of your faith range. You won't be able to pay for it, but you still will possess it. I paid for it by showing up to church with no results for years. Y'all missed it. And I praised him like I had it for years. And I testified of his goodness when I was experiencing bad situations for years last but not least and I'm done and I hope y'all got something out of this but 50 of you catch this when you are losing strength in one area strength I'm about to run myself strength never leaves your body it just shifts to another area 
So his lower extremities had nothing. But his upper torso. You got to read it. Was strong enough to carry Peter and John. And if I say this and one of you scream, you got it. God said, when I bless you, you're going to be able to carry other people. When I bless you, you're going to have enough to carry more people than you ever needed to carry yourself. The strength never left the body. When you lose one of your senses, another one heightens. It never leaves the body. So it left his lower extremities, his upper extremities were strong. Which then told me people didn't preach it right. Maybe some of us, even me at least, eight times when I was a kid. But one person, I don't care who y'all, you will yell for me. You don't know what I need, but you yell for me, and that's this. He never walked, but it didn't say his arms didn't let him. If you look at people born with no leg, their upper body is so strong. But the correct way to walk is with feet. But if you have to, he did it with his arms. When he got tired, someone carried him. One person yelled, become a multi-millionaire like I'm going to be, but you got to catch it. The Lord said, tell you, you did well, but I'm tired of you doing it wrong. I'm about to put it. You were not created to work three jobs. You were not created to get married three times. Let's do it right. I thank God that I'm versatile, but I want to do it the way it was supposed to be done. You're holding the hands of a debt-free child of God. If they don't believe it, let them go. Most lonely people die miserable and all their money is given to somebody else. I hear you, Holy Ghost. There's only two people in here dissatisfied. One is a man, the other one something else. One is a man who knows he's a preacher. He's upset that I didn't prophesy or certify his miracle because he believes I'm a true prophet. You should have been into the word of God. Because at the end of the day, your prophetic will not be the reason why you go global. This generation don't care. They want to hear the word of the Lord. My church had to come out of town to see me prophesy. <laughs> they had to sit there and be like, Jesus Christ. But all they get is turn with me, 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 turn with me. Because at the end of the day, heaven and earth shall pass away. But it's the word of the Lord that's going to stand forever. I hear the Lord speaking. For the last time, play the piano. You're holding the hand of somebody who you want to see have great credit and be able to get it in their own name. Everything I own is in my name. No co-signer for me. Even when I couldn't afford it, don't co-sign, I'll just wait. I've not ran up anyone's credit cards. What I know of, I've not lived in anyone's house.
I went from eviction to a homeowner. From a 10-speed bike to a pretty nice ride. I went from public school, PS 125. You got to get excited about your from before you scream over your two. Look where he's brought me from. Don't admire my today if you can't respect my yesterday. Because it's because of how I walk during the days of small beginnings is why I have whatever I have and what I have will never have me. A young man yesterday saw my new truck and he said to me, that's bad, Pop. I said, thank you. Black on black, man, that's smooth. Thank you. You deserve it, Pop. You struggled. Thank you. Man, you deserve more than that. I said, come here, boy, take the keys and take the truck. No, no, I said, get in it so that you can see what it feels like. You ain't got to come back no time soon. Because when what you have does not have you, you will let somebody else feel so that their hopes and their expectations could say, God would never let me test what he won't bless. You don't ever believe God will put you in the company of wealth if he's not telling you you're going to be wealthy. What he puts in your face, he wants you to consider possessing. Now hold that neighbor's hand like they can pay all your bills off tonight. Tonight. And y'all laughing, but there's a few of us that can no doubt whatsoever. And the church should boast in it because we need to see proof that it can happen outside of just secularism. I ain't going to tell for what I can do. Well, how would they know what God can do? You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. Hallelujah. 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 All right, Pastor, I heard the Lord clearly. Close your eyes. I heard him clear.